Hey, Big Yacker here on Big Yacker TV. Today uh, I got in touch with a subscriber and uh, a Facebook follower, um, Mr. Noah, uh, who asked me to either make a video or post a couple pictures um, allowing him to know what my setup is, uh, kind of an in-depth setup of my Vibe Kayak Seaghost 13. Um, with me being a larger guy and him also being a larger guy, uh, whenever we are out there on the water, whether it be big water um, lakes, offshore, um, wide rivers, or small water, uh, small rivers, larger ponds, um, wherever the case may be, um, my kayak is set up for a, for a guy of my size. Today, uh, you know, at the request of Mr. Noah, I'm going to go ahead and make you guys a YouTube video of my Vibe Kayak Seagos 13. Um, and the small little tweaks where I put everything, what I carry along in my kayak, the important things, and the stuff that I leave behind because, you know, personally I feel like it's not really doing me enough justice on the kayak. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, guys, so for the uh, front hatch, I don't really put much in the kayak simply because if I'm sitting way back there at the, uh, at the, the seat of the boat, um, it's very difficult for me to get up front unless maybe I'm going offshore and I'm taking my wife uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get each other's stuff out of the front hatch. Um, so for like transport, um, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll put pretty much my fish grips in there. If I got a couple tackle boxes, um, I'll go ahead and put them in there as well. But for the most part, the front hatch uh, goes unused for the most part simply because I can't reach it from the, um, the front seat. Uh, I really don't. I really don't miss it at all. Um, uh, so it's not really a downside. Um, but uh, for me, if I was like going camping, for sure, this is a prime spot. I don't need a sleeping bag while I'm on my kayak. Um, I don't need. Uh, I don't need. Um, you know, a tent while I'm on the kayak. There's a lot of things that if we're going camping, I could definitely put in here, um, and I do put in here. Uh, but that's not the main. Um, that's not the main use for me and this hatch. Um, so let's move on. All right, guys. So this right here, um, I'm gonna hit on this really quick. This is like a front holder. Um, uh, it's just a straight PVC. Um, can't remember what size, but it is just pop riveted to the kayak. Um, the stakeout pole, which is this white pole right here, um, just slides right in it and then it secures uh, further towards the back of the kayak. Um, but this right here is great because it will not pop off. It's in there, it's secure as long as the bungee in the back is uh, in place. Um, it's uh, pop riveted into the side of the kayak. This right here, um, like I said, this is a DIY uh, um, stakeout pole that I made. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description um, and a uh, link in the video. So, All right, moving back a little bit further, we have um, a Scotty Mount rod holder over here. We have a Scotty Mount rod holder over there. Um, and the Vibe Kayak uh, gear track, the beveled gear track that fits on the gunnels. Um, this right here. Uh, I also have a video on how to install. Um, it is great. I show you exactly where to put it to maximize um, to maximize mobility. And uh, this these things are amazing. Um, it keeps you. It pretty much you know you put 16 um, 16 stainless steel self-tapping screws into the side of your boat and leave it alone. Other than that, um, it's it's watertight. It's not going anywhere. It's very secure to the kayak. Um, and once you have these two, or if you just want to buy one of them, um, once you have these uh, two gear tracks installed, you can pretty much just wrap putting any more holes into your boat. You just wrap it up. It's, it's not happening. There's no need for it. You can put anything from fish finders, uh, GPS, rod holders, uh, your pan fish camera mounts, DIY camera mounts, anything that you could think of can go on these gun rails right here, these uh, these gear tracks, they're amazing. Alright guys, so pretty much I, I just have a standard lid, I haven't cut any holes, um, haven't done any uh, crazy stuff to it, um, so it's still in there, original, 
But let's go ahead and take a look inside and I'll show you what's in there. So inside the center hatch right here, um, I keep for night fishing, you have to keep a light. I keep this light in here um, pretty much just in case uh, it's actually, you know, you can use it for safety. This does have a strobe on it, has a very, very uh, um, good uh, spotlight um, or just, you know, having a, having a light if you're doing a little bit of low light to do some uh, rigging on your uh, fishing line. Go ahead and make some leaders. Um, the hatch is long enough to where if you're a kind of guy that uh, buys your own leaders, um, for the most part you can fit, you know, probably about two foot a leader in here. Um, that way it's not tangling up and it's not, uh, it's going to go ahead and track straight in the water. If you know what kind of fish you're uh, going for, you can go ahead and you can keep your uh, those size hooks in this hatch right here along with some scupper plugs and just miscellaneous other gear that you need. Um, I keep my fish sticks in there if I'm fishing with jig heads, soft plastics. All right. right now I just got done with a catfish, uh, um, catfish run. So I have um, two ounce pyramid weights um, and then catfish hooks. Um, and I always keep an anchor in there just in case I want to anchor off somewhere. Also, it has rope in case I wanted to go ahead and tie myself to a tree um, and not go anywhere. If I'm doing, um, like I said, jig head fishing, I'll keep my fish sticks in there um, to rub on the side of my uh, soft plastics. I'll keep my jig heads in this cup holder um, or cup holder compartment. Um, and then I will have my bags of soft plastics, whether it be worms, paddle tails, whatever. Keep those right here. It's a great spot for them. Um, it fits perfectly in between right here, and you can just kind of file them, file through them like a cabinet. All right, right here usually is where I keep the rest of my scupper plugs. If I have, if you know, if I don't have any up there, usually they're all always in here. Um, and for the most part, that is my center hatch. It doesn't change much from that. All right, guys, and so right here is my DIY cutting board that I put um, towards the. Uh, the middle of the boat um, where you sit at that way you know if you're fishing with shrimp or any cut bait you can go ahead and put them on that um, and you won't eventually end up coming through your center hatch um, it's put in with four stainless steel screws that I just put in place and uh, it's pretty much the holes that are in your that are already pre-drilled with the plastic backing, it fits right into those. You just got to make sure you measure it out and uh, and drill some pilot holes exactly where um, those holes are already set in place. So, uh, but like I said, this is my DIY cutting board. Um, comes in handy, and I use it a ton pretty much every trip I go on. All right, guys. So for right here, this is my stainless steel carabiner that I put on my Kingfisher seats. Um, it's great uh, simply because every single uh, uh, thing in this carabiner clip is stainless steel. So if you do any type of salt water fishing, um, I, I definitely, definitely recommend switching out the uh, generic or the um, original clips that the Vibe Kayaks, or actually the Feel Free um, Kingfisher seat comes with. Um, they are not stainless steel. You, you, know, you can go ahead and clean them up, but eventually they will end up corroding. These right here. You're, uh, you can't. You definitely cannot go wrong with these right here. I think they're about four dollars a piece from your hardware store. Um, a little bit pricey when you you know think about it. It's twenty dollars, um, but eventually you're gonna have to buy another one. And if all you do is salt water, uh, you're gonna be buying these clips and replacing them all the time. So it's well worth, uh, well well worth the, uh, the investment. Um, this right here is the uh, p the paddle leash that I have actually installed on the kayak. I know a lot of people put them right here. Um, they'll actually uh, sew them in. I'm not much of a seamstress, so um, I did it this way. Popper did right here, here, and one um, off camera. Go ahead and pop that open. This is your uh, stakeout pole. It'll slide right back, slide right back into that PVC that I showed you guys earlier. Place it in here, latch it down. It's not going anywhere. It's in place and it's very secure. I think he's tired. Oh, monster boy. <laughs> Alright guys, so on this right here, um, 
this is actually my very, very simplistic um, anchor trolley system. I don't use it much unless I'm using my uh, stakeout pole, um, which, you know, lately I've been doing a ton of offshore fishing, um, so I don't really use it all that often. It's uh, three eyelets, one, one back there, and the third one's up here. Another thing I want to go ahead and point out is on my Vibe Kayak, I only installed a half anchor trolley system. Um, I have on my other kayaks, my older kayaks uh, that were not Vibe, installed the entire anchor trolley system and I found it kind of useless. Uh, and I found myself never um, anchoring off the front of my boat. Alright guys, so on my milk crate it does change uh, quite frequently depending on the style of fishing that I'm doing. Um, and in this segment, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, not just pretty much the, the milk crate, but also this entire area back here. Um, as you can tell, it's very secure. Uh, this right here, this bungee is actually for securing rods if I'm going out during the surf. Again, like I said, depending on what kind of fishing, the actual innards to the milk crate change quite frequently. If I'm doing catfish, I'm going to have some dead bait with me. Um, very rarely will I fish maybe with sh live shad, um, but uh, for the most part, like I said, it's, it's, all, it's all dead bait, cut bait. So I'll have a small cooler back here, about half full of ice um, with some shrimp, um, maybe some uh, chicken gizzards that have been soaking in some liver blood um, or uh, beef liver, uh, whatever the case may be, whatever I'm fishing with, you know, go ahead and put it back here in a cooler. Um, this right here uh, is pretty much in case you know the catfish aren't biting maybe I want to throw some lures I got some lures in here uh, also in here I have some more hooks in case I want to use some soft plastic worms I got some worm hooks in here now if I'm going offshore um, for the most part uh, I'm going with my wife or I'm going with a friend one of us will actually have a full-size cooler um, or not full size, but a cooler that fits in the back. Um, in my case, there is a Coleman cooler um, that I will go ahead and I'll uh, up here or here. It's just a picture of the cooler. I'll try to find a link in the, um, and put it in the description of where you can get it. And it, it, like I said, it fits perfectly in the back. Um, one of us, anyway, one of us will carry that out. The other will kill, uh, carry this milk crate. Usually it's me keeping the chest because it's a little bit heavier. Um, in the milk crate, I will then place a five-gallon uh, five-gallon bucket and have a shush bubble on the side for aeration. And we'll go ahead and we'll keep some. We'll go ahead and cast net for some mullet, um, or maybe I'll pick up some googly eyes or goggle eyes. I call them googly eyes. Anyways, uh, pick up some uh, googly eyes from the bait store, um, put them in the container, and go offshore. Um, so that is my offshore setup. Now for my inshore. Um, milk crate. For the most part, it's all lures. I might take my uh, catfish cooler, um, the one that I was telling you about keeping the dead bait in, I might keep it for some um, for some dead shrimp. Um, put the dead shrimp in there and go ahead and uh, put those on a small you know, size 2 hook, throw it out there for some spot uh, to use as bait. You know, up, up baiting uh, to you know, maybe get a bigger red, a bowl red, um, or even some trout. Uh, so that is my inshore setup back here. Now as far as out of the box, pretty much the first thing I do every time I get out of my truck and I start loading my kayak into the water, I take my shoes off. I don't like shoes. Um, I put those in the back of the kayak. I put them right here. Uh, now as far as towards me, um, if I have my uh, five gallon bucket, there is no room for these guys right here. And usually I keep a lot of hooks with me if I'm going offshore. I'll go ahead and I'll take this out here, set it down in there. It's not going anywhere. You can actually take this one out too, place it in there. Very rarely do I bring two of them. Um, also, another thing I do on the outside of the box, I'm always videotaping pretty much every time I go out is my GoPro box. It's a, it's a simplistic, um, very small, compact, waterproof case that I keep 
Um, GoPro batteries, extra GoPro batteries. I'll keep a couple mounts that I might use. Um, I'll keep my GoPro remote. Um, but all of that stuff goes in here. And it slides right there and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my paddle and then I'll pretty much be done. All right guys, so I really love the uh, new Evolve paddle, um, extendable paddle from Vibe Kayaks. It's an amazing paddle. Um, it does me very well. Um, it cuts extremely well through the water and it's very quiet. Um, one thing I did find out whenever I first got this is that there are two nipples on here or two balls. Um, either one doesn't sound good, but there's two nipples on this one. Um, and that meant that you know, as far as where you could hold it, it kind of limited where you could hold it. So I've already installed my yak grips um, from my other paddle that I had, um, and they work extremely well. Um, and they come in handy definitely at nighttime. Um, and you wonder why yak grips would come definitely, in, and this is actually why I got them in yellow. At nighttime, it's a lot more difficult to see this little line, which uh, during the day, Without yak grips, people usually have a tendency to simply try to keep their hands um, equally apart from that line because that symbolizes the middle of the paddle. But with these yak grips, at nighttime, these being this, this bright, bright yellow, I love bright stuff, but these being bright yellow and you can feel them on the paddle, your hands are always in the correct position. They're always equally apart, equal apart from that line. Um, and it's extremely comfortable. It cuts down on the fatigue, especially for us big guys. We're pushing a lot of weight through that water. Go ahead and get you a pair of 11 or $12 yet grips on Amazon. I'll go ahead and I'll leave the, uh, leave the link in the description. Um, but uh, pick you up a pair of these, they're amazing. And while you're at it, take a look at the uh, Vibe Kayaks Evolve Paddle. One thing I do want to hit on really quick before I end the video everything that you have tie it down with a leash everything i can't stress that enough the only thing you don't need to uh link yourself to is the kayak um and hell even i would think about doing that if you're in some strong current simply because you don't want to get away from really other than your pfd the only thing that's floating um so like i said invest in some two dollar uh two dollar paddle leashes or make your own, do a DIY. Uh, maybe I'll do a DIY to show you. Um, get some uh, paracord. Go ahead and tie down everything you have. All right, so Noah, thank you very much for the uh, video recommendation. Um, I appreciate your subscribe. Also to all my other subscribers, you guys are amazing. Um, thank you for your input, whether it be on Facebook um, or through the YouTube channel. Make sure you share these videos. But this is wrapping up the uh, setup video that I'm making for Noah. So Noah, I hope that this video helped you out. And to all my other subscribers again, I appreciate you guys watching and hope this helped you out as well. Um, you know, food for thought. So uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe again. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.